We are at uh, Barzakh Bookstore, Bookshop, Cafe, where they are uh, preparing food for uh, the internally displaced. Let's see inside. Kefak. Alhamdulillah. This is Dimitri. Khadr is uh, one of the people that. He's the manager here at uh, the cafe, and they are preparing food for the displaced in Beirut. It's one of many other places that are doing this. And so you can see how the businesses in Beirut, uh, in the Hamra area, are trying their best to serve uh, all the internally displaced uh, out of their uh, budget, out of their own goodwill. There's, uh, I know we're uh, taking of your precious time volunteering on this. Uh, maybe we can, um, you know, give us a, a, a brief assessment and to you started this work uh, of feeding people when? So it happened the first day of four when it started. Uh, oh, so are we talking back in October of last year? Or no, no, October, this, uh, September this year, like 27, 26. When they, was this after they assassinated uh, exactly. Sayyid Asala? No, 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 before that. It, before was, that. it was on Tuesday. I don't, I don't remember the dates. You know, we have, we're living in confusion right now. We don't know which day it was, yeah. with all of that. So uh, we started, we had a meeting here with me and the staff, and we decided to make like 100 meal out of our pocket, me and the staff, for people who got displaced from the south. And then I had a friend, she's a head of NGO here in Hamra in the same building, it's called Ahla Fawda. She contacted me and she told me, since you want to cook, I can provide for you ingredients to cook and go for more people. So uh, I put a post on Facebook, <clears throat> this post by the end of the day it reached 225-250 share. So people start donating money from outside Lebanon in Lebanon. People start coming and dropping ingredients over here. Uh, Ahla Fawda start giving ingredients. So from 100 meal we decided to make, we ended up in that day 800 meal. Wow. And since that day till now we're making almost 2,600, 2,400 meal a day. Here in this restaurant? Yep. Wow, so you, you must have a lot of staff working on those meals. I have the staff of the restaurant, I have the, the head chef, and I have, like, everybody is cooking right now. The barista, the, the steward is helping, the, the sous chef is helping, uh, some volunteering coming to help, you know, uh -huh. so th there's a lot of staff doing it. It's The first week it was very chaotic because, you know, like, the thing happened so fast, people start moving from the south, getting displaced really fast, so... Somebody call you like, we need a hundred meal. Okay, like 30 minutes later, it's 500 now. So you're like... So how are you delivering these meals to people? Are you going out to areas yes, where they're we're just... we're going to the schools, actually. Right. Where we're, uh, there's three schools, Ras Beirut. Here in, in Hamra, in Hamra. Or, or, uh, There's two schools in Hamra and right. one school in Tariq uh -huh. So we're giving to Ras Beirut, we're giving to Anjali, and we're giving to Amar Farrukh in Tariq uh, Ras Beirut and in Zilie, uh, the Ahla Fauda volunteers going like they're going there to give the few people because if you're gonna keep using pa packing material like boxes and all of that and you need to pack let's say 800 meal or 900 meal it's gonna take you a lot of time and a lot of cost mm -hmm. because each each box for example is like 2,000 2,000 box and it's 83 dollars so. I suggest that let's take the whole pot over there and we start putting to people, we start serving them over there. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, effective, um, money-wise, uh, time, time, like time, co you know, cost of time. Mm -hmm. So everything was fast. I go to Amar Farouk in Tariq really because it, it used to be my neighborhood before I, le uh, I left Lebanon. And I know most of people over there. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's how it's going. And that, that's, that's despite the people who call me all the day, like, do you have a hundred mean? I'm like, yeah, come and take. Do you have 200 mean? Because we have some people move from this place to this place and okay. So uh, some, sometimes you're taking the meals out to people and sometimes people are coming, picking up exactly, batches of meals. Exactly, and, wow. because this, yeah. it, like, it, um, how, to, how to say it? You know, some, sometimes people give me a call and they're like, we have a hundred uh, domestic workers. Uh, they are in Ramd al and they don't have food for three days. So I start making, making food for them. Someone called, um, he's a friend of the place. He called me and he told me like, there's 120 uh, person from Bangladesh. Nobody's giving them food. So I'm like, okay, let's cook for them. Mm -hmm. Do you have so, any idea how many meals uh, you've The one I have to give every day, 
It's 900, uh, 2,300. This is every day. And the one I give to people, like 100, 150, 200, I have no idea, I don't count. So you, you may be over 100,000 meals at this stage. Oh yeah, yeah. that's for sure. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's for amazing. sure. Yeah. So you know, where I come from, Canada, uh, yeah. nowadays I'm embarrassed to say that actually, um, the, uh, there's, a, there's a view, uh, an uninformed view about Lebanon, especially now with the war, that uh, it's such a sectarian society and you know, the Christians don't get along with the Muslims and the Shia don't get along with the Sunni. I understand you're from a, a Christian family, is that, is that no, right? I no, I come from a Muslim family, a Sunni family. Yeah. I'm uh, agnostic. Uh-huh. Uh, one of the team is uh, from a Muslim family. Sorry for give, being specific, just no, that's I okay. want to show the Please diversity do. in the kitchen. Yeah. So one of the staff is uh, Shia. Uh, two of the staff are Syrian, they're helping like out of them, out of them hard. One of the staff is mixed between Sunni and Shia, and with all the volunteers, there's a lot of people coming from everywhere. And trust me, like nobody even think that we need to do for this part of people or this part of people. Like I just told you before you asked me this question, somebody called me for Bangladesh people. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna give them. Or like African domestic workers. Okay, I'm gonna give them. Mm -hmm. I don't care what I'm going to give. People right. need, like we are humans, all of that. And the people who are coming from the south when you need your help, yeah. they're not just Shia, they're not just Sunni, they're also no, Christians, I, I, they're coming from all yeah, sorts of backgrounds. Everywhere, everybody getting displaced, yeah, right. you know, because now, now that the, if you want to look at uh, what happened the last 10 days, they are targeting everyone, you know, like two days ago they hit, they, they bombed strike uh, Nuwairi, and Nuwairi is like, it's a very busy area, uh, a lot of people living there, it's a public place, you know, like, and suddenly they hit it. So in Nawaiti, for example, there's a lot of people like from everywhere living, like Shia, Sunni, Sunni uh, Christian, everywhere, Durzi. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So no, no, we... Uh, it, it, yeah. You I, know, he I, mentioned uh, multiple times the uh, foreign workers and domestic workers, uh, which have had less uh, attention, uh, uh, less attention to them. Uh, since this war came, began and obviously there's a problem with uh, many of these domestic workers, their passports, let's say being with the agencies and or their employers who left the country or left them alone and so on. So we have this problem uh, and Barzakh uh, and, and you know the generous people here are uh, some of those who are trying to fill this gap and make sure that these foreign workers are not uh, forgotten, especially in this war. Right. And there's no tracking. You, you know, their their embassies have abandoned them. Their their employers have abandoned them. It's a big issue. Uh, and I think uh, Barzakh is is doing a great job. I've been looking at the, the organizations that are trying to uh, do this and this shows you how much solidarity i think uh, has uh, you know grown within the population mm -hmm. uh, because of the calamity that we're living mm -hmm. so I, I do have one other question since we're on the subject of you know the workers who've been abandoned and so forth uh, this is the fifth time i've been to lebanon since uh, the beginning of last year okay and i've come four times since october since the genocide started in october and uh you know, I've always stayed in central Beirut. Last night was a Friday night. I spent two hours walking around. I've never seen it so quiet in central Beirut on a Friday night. So I imagine this is having a terrible impact on the local economy, on the businesses here. It's, it must be difficult to continue it's, to function in it's this. It's uh, very environment. difficult. Like, how to say it? The, f the first week, for example, people were very excited. They were giving donations, they were giving ingredients. Now we are on the 16th or 17th day, right? It became way less. Uh, after targeting the public areas, people st they start going out way less. They prefer to stay at their home or move out Beirut, going mm -hmm. to the places that con they considered safe. I don't know how. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, it's, um, it's very bad. Mm -hmm. You know, like no one coming, uh, everybody's scared, everybody's feeling something will happen. Um, this, this tension, you can, see, you can sense it on, in, in people, on the streets. Um, so I know like even today or tomorrow, they will, start, like, they, they will decide, let's cease fire, nothing. Gonna, okay, all is done, war, this, this, this will finish. 
Lebanon needs at least two years to like to stand up again, at least because we already we were already in, in having economic problems, uh, the, the the Lira situation, and now with all of this destruction, I know we're gonna we're gonna like we're gonna be in a very bad situation. Mm-hmm. So this will, will 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 have a very bad impact on many, on many businesses, and I'm sure a lot of companies gonna close. Like even now, Barza, when we start doing this. We decided, as I told you at the start of our conversation, we're gonna start from the, our own pocket, and people then start giving us ingredients, money, and all of that. But when you pay, when you when you feed 2,000 person a day, and let's say I'm making a meal, one dollar, so I need to pay every day 2,000 dollar. So you need a lot of donations every day going on. So I don't know what what's gonna happen later on, and. You have to pay rent, you have to pay generator because you know the situation in Lebanon. So I don't know how long we can go, honestly. Mm-hmm. But like for me, as being the operation manager of this place, I'm trying to find all the gaps in this operation to keep going and try to fill it somehow. So yeah, it, it is hectic. It's 24 hours thinking to find a way to find a solution. Mm-hmm. And the staff here is being so generous, honestly. Like when it started, I sat with them, I told them, I'm not gonna leave you in this world because most of the places told them like your staff, you can leave, you know, we won't have enough money to, to give you a salary. I, I was like, guys, I'm gonna give you half a salary. I'll find a way to find it, even if I have to pay from the bo- my pocket. But I need you to work for full time because we cannot do this operation without you being here. None say no, all of them, yeah, we are in. And they are actually working more than 14 hours a day because they're like, forget about the business, we're helping people. Yeah. And nobody's seeking for anything, you know, like, because after all, maybe we are in a better place. We still have a house and because all of us living in Beirut, you know, so we still have a house. We still have uh, food at our home. Now, I don't know what's going to happen after two weeks because you can see things are getting bad and bad every day. Mm-hmm. So we're trying to give a hand as much as we can. It's draining emotionally, physically, like yeah. everybody's tired. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about myself. I last, last someone to contact me last Saturday. They were like, "Okay, I'm gonna give you 1,400 sandwiches for covering for lunch. So you need you don't need to like uh, to, to to figure out what you're gonna do on Sunday." So I'm like, "Okay, guys, all of you take off. I'll come. I'll do the, the distribution." So everybody took off. I took them in the car, start going to the school because they still need it. Mm-hmm. And for me, because I, I somehow I had experience. I, I, I used to work with an NGO in 2006. So I used to take food parcels to the south. During the war? To, during the war. Mm-hmm. Something related to the UN. So mm-hmm. I used to take food parcels to the south. Mm-hmm. So I had experience from this. And then I left outside Lebanon for like 15 years between China, Cambodia and Colombia. And I used to work with some NGOs to help kids in Cambodia or like in India, whatever it is. So it's, it's like I take unpaid leave from my work for two months and I go work with this. So I have some kind of experience in this kind of field. Mm-hmm. This staff over here, this is the first time they live this. I'm so proud of them. I'm really so proud of them. In five days, they could build a team and they start functioning normally. Like you see, at the first week, you see me shouting, yelling, do this, do that. Now I'm just sitting, having a c- cigarette and they're doing the, the everything. The lunch will be ready at 1.30. I'm ready to go to the first school. They build themselves and I'm really proud of them. Uh, yesterday we made uh, chicken, rice, bean, uh, chickpeas, uh, something full with chicken. Uh, today we're making this, tomorrow they're going to have burgers. So we give them a di- the diversity on, on lunch. At dinner, yesterday they had pizza. We made pizza and a lot of people helping me, honestly. Like I, I went to some uh, guy to, to a bakery and I'm like, I have 900 person at dinner, I need to feed them. He gave, me, he gave me the cheapest price ever, you know, and it's, it's, it's a cent. He, he, 10,000 10, Lebanese lira, which is a cent. He told me I can make 900, just give me the tomato paste, give me the cheese, give me, give me all the ingredients, I'm gonna give for you the, 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 the dough, dough and the gas and the, and the labor. Mm-hmm. Everybody's helping, honestly. People are like, they just create a system to be compatible with each other. And everybody, they were like, we need, we want to help. Mm-hmm. Is this uh, the donation jar for the food? Is no, this, this is the tips. Ah, so tips. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the donation jar is. Well, I'm uh, going to leave one anyway. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> the, dona- the donations come to, they contact Barzakh and they, I talk to them. 
people send to my to my Western to the Western Union. This is a problem. Also, I had. Yeah. I asked when the when the, the thing happened. I start. I asked the agent like, how? What is my limit? And they like seven thousand a month. I'm like perfect. I hope I reach seven thousand. After two days, I reach one thousand two hundred the dollar. They blocked me on Western Union, and I'm like, why? They were like, because of the frequent transaction in two days. But I'm like, I'm getting twenty five and thirty dollars and forty dollars, not that much. And I'm like, yeah, here's the email of the customer service. Send them, and they can reply you. I send it with all the details, with all the posts on Facebook, on Instagram, what I'm doing, all of that to the customer service. No reply. I'm still blocked. Wow. So how 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 can Let's say the viewers watching this, uh, how can they donate or help you from outside Lebanon? Contact me. I have Wish, Wish account. It's an app in Lebanon. It's 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 legit. I have uh, something called Tap Tap. I have uh, a friend, a, a friend of, of mine. She's from France. She told me about an app called Purple. So there's a lot of ways. Okay. Just we'll, put, we'll put the information in the description yes. to the YouTube video. Just yes. contact me. Yeah. I'll find a, I'll find a million way. And and there is also I need I need to mention that I'm sorry. There's a lot of ideas in yeah. my head. There is one. Uh, she's a lady. She she's from Belgium, I think. And she was like, I want to send you one thousand five hundred dollar. And she was like, Okay, send it by Western Union. She sent it to me, and then I knew I, I was blocked. So I'm like, I don't know what happened. I'm blocked. I'm like, Okay, I don't care. I'm coming. So she came. Wow. And she gave me the cash. Wow. And she, she was like, in. she was like, I don't care about Western Union. Here's the money. And but we'll, we'll just, I just want to make sure people watching know we'll put the donation information in the yes. description to the YouTube so video. So if they can go to the website, Barzakh's website. Uh, the, the Instagram page. Okay. They have my number. Contact me or just text the message. I will be replying and I'm going to explain everything. First, perfect. Visit the Barzakh on Instagram. We'll put the uh, the link there, and inshallah, the, there will be more donations, more help. Uh, inshallah, all of you stay safe and stronger, and uh, the country, uh, all to standing together like this, is what's actually you know be scaring the Zionists and the West. Inshallah, Lebanon will be safe. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.